Yes, I'll be talking about that. I've used three different apps so far. I'm always exploring new ones. So the first one that I tried was something called ArtRage. R-A-G-E. So that one was very elementary. It's actually a good beginner um, thing to just ex experiment with color and explore line and things like that. So that's one that you might try. I can't remember whether there was a fee for it, but if there was, it was like $1.99 for the app. It's not a lot to spend. And then the next one that I tried was Art Studio. And I liked Art Studio a lot. Uh, it's a much more sophisticated app. Uh, it has uh, custom tools that you can design and um, brushes and palettes that you keep for each painting. So that's very helpful. The one thing that um, Art Studio doesn't have is the ability to export as video. So if that's something you're interested in, you probably want to try the latest one that they're working with, and that's called Procreate. And another advantage of Procreate is that on top of allowing you to export as video, as well as a, a hard copy image, you can export images and videos in different formats. So you can you can export as a JPEG, which is the normal way that you would uh, export a, an image on most programs. But there are also other um, options that you have. Some of them are a sharper image. And um, I'll, I'll explain that to you later. I'll be actually showing you all of this later. Probably I won't show you art rage, but the other two I'll be able to show you. So I thought maybe I'd start by just explaining how um, what I was doing before iPad. I started, uh, I'll just give you a little bit of a synopsis and on our uh, retrospect on how long I've been working and what I've been doing and how I got started in art. So I didn't really do anything until 1972. I was a, a student of history and French literature in Toronto at York University. Uh, in my, after my third year of studies, I worked the summer at a federal government office where somebody had just come back from a, an exchange in France and she suggested to me, because we were both in similar programs, that uh, I think about going to my fourth year in France. So that's what I ended up doing. I, over the summer I applied as a, a foreign student and went to the University of aix marseille in Provence, which was wonderful. She suggested I go there instead of Strasbourg where there was winter. So I had a nice, kind of like a Victoria uh, fall and winter there. And, uh, but I was really focused on history and language. I wasn't thinking about art, except I was in Provence. And the light was incredible. The, uh, just the history of art and all the museums, everything was there. And I was just affected by it. And the longer I stayed in France, I went to Italy and Spain, the more I became interested in art. And, that became something I just wanted to do. I don't know why. I just I was, maybe it was the golden light there. I'm not sure, but it was just um, I was motivated to switch my focus of studies. I finished my degree in French, but after I got back to Canada, I actually started drawing in uh, Madrid when I was there. I was sick in a hotel room, and I just picked up a pencil and I started to draw. Had no training at all. Um, no art background before that. And um, when I got back to Canada, I just continued drawing. I started taking night nice school courses in Toronto because I was working for the federal government and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I, what I really wanted to do was go to art college. So I applied to the Ontario College of Art after one year. I had a very brief portfolio to offer them, but they saw some potential in my work allowed me to start as a mature student in the Fine Arts program at Ontario College of Art. So I started that at the age of 24, and uh, that period of my life was, um, well I can show you some of the work I was doing back then. I actually have some of it still. I was studying color theory, and I was, the tr 
training there was very classical, so I took life drawing and um, color theory, and there was some experimental art going on, but not a lot. But I was really interested in color theory and really Latendre's work in Canada and Jack Bush with his color field paintings. So my studies were about that, and my paintings were like that. They were very, you know, albers. And I learned a lot about color that way. But that's what I was doing in the, in the uh, mid-70s. And then, uh, in 1979, uh, my partner and I moved out of the city of Toronto and into the countryside. And I was really an urban person. I hadn't really experienced gardens. So I felt um, interested for the first time, just like I was by art. I was really interested in gardening and the skies that were there. And I started to do botanical work. So I just need to get around. There. So I started working on uh, flowers. And again, my, my training was classical, so everything I had learned at the Ontario College of Art, I started to use with my botanical works. And I continued to work in botanicals right up until we moved to Vancouver Island in 2006. In fact, some of this stuff I showed at Shemanus and uh, the old schoolhouse gallery in Wollaton. And I was in a show for the Canada Bloom Show in Toronto. Before we left there, I was into a juried show for botanical artists in Canada. So that's, as you can see, my training was very classical, and my interest was on accuracy with what I was seeing and so on. And um, of course, I ended up becoming a teacher because at the age of 31, uh, I wasn't making very much money, like most artists. And I had a degree in French and history, so that allowed me to teach high school and elementary school and French, which is a very a great commodity to have as a teacher. And that provided me with financial security. And that also allowed me to continue to paint and draw in the summers and weekends. I had a studio and would have um, um, annual studio shows and sales mostly with my botanical work, and sometimes with, um, get this out of the way, excuse me. So, this was one of the skies in Ontario where we live, and um, I took up pastels as well. So I worked in a lot of media. I. Um, apprenticed with a wood engraver in Ontario while we were, I just left to Toronto and I was fortunate enough to work with a very fine wood engraver in Gerard Brenner of Randis, who lives in Stratford and has his work in the National Gallery. And uh, I wasn't interested per se in what he was doing, but I kind of learned a lot from him and applied what I, what I learned in his um, studio, helping him with his printing of his prints, so I, I took up etching instead of wood engraving. And I had a lot, of, a, a lot of interest in a lot of different things, and one of the persons that really affected me back in the late 70s, early 80s was David Hockney, who you probably know, if you're interested in iPad works, you know who Hockney is, because he's the, the artist of international fame who now is showing his uh, iPad works in San Francisco and Toronto and Paris and London. So Hockney is somebody, if you don't know who he is, uh, do some research and see what he's been doing with um, iPad over the last few years. But Hockney was working with technology long before the iPad was invented. He started to use fax machines to when faxes were first available and he would do a drawing and send a fax of a drawing out to his friends, just like we would do with email these days. And he began to work with photography. He came from England in the 60s and did a lot of experimental stuff with um, board paper, casting paper, made paper molds of paintings, incredible stuff, really. Um, and I was fascinated by him, but I wasn't really, I never really 
was interested in technology. I, I had um, an Adobe Photoshop program back about 20 years ago, and I wasn't interested because it was so remote. It was all about the mouse, and your fingers and hands weren't involved. It wasn't a manual exercise at all. So um, until um, 20 years later, a friend of ours uh, arrived from Toronto in 2013. No, sorry, 2012, November 2012, just before Christmas. And she had a tablet, a new tablet, a Galaxy. And her first night there, she said, "Oh, I have a, I have a, um, a an app that I didn't even know what an app was at that time." She said, "I have an app on this tablet. You might be interested. It's got a, a cartooning program on it. And it was sort of like Art Rage, the, the app I mentioned to you earlier. Um, maybe you'd like to try it." So. Try it. I just loved it. I, as soon as I touched it, I realized this is what I've been looking for in technology, because it, it's the heat of my finger is what activates everything that happens, and my hand is involved in it, and all of the drawing I do, all the painting, all the mixing, it's all with my finger. So it's not. It doesn't have that sense of being detached from the technology. The technology is very responsive, and that's the thing that I like about it the best. Um, and it has a relationship to what I've been doing because pastels are mixed with my finger. I don't. I've never really liked using this, um, stubs of things to. I like getting my hands dirty with my work, um, and I like blending with my finger. And I can do all of those things with iPad. So um, that's how I actually got into using my iPad. She uh, stayed for a week. I didn't give her back a tablet for a whole week. Oh, the other really cool thing about the tablet was this app was that it had the the exporting of video capacity, which um, to me was fascinating because it meant for the first time in 40 years of being an artist that I could actually watch my own process. I could watch every single stroke that I made from a blank canvas to a finished to these finished pieces that you hear see here. So. This is a piece of botanical work that I was doing uh, 10 years ago. That was in one of those shows in Toronto. And then, um, where's the other piece? I can get the same kind of accuracy with my finger on the iPad. This was done with my finger on the iPad. The process is really speeded up. My actual output as an artist has probably tripled or quadrupled in the last year and a half, once I got the basic skills of the app down. Um, because I don't have to wait for things like my background color to dry. I, I can paint it with the touch of a finger. Just one, one touch and my whole background is... And if I don't like that, I can go to my virtual palette and change it just a shade in either direction. And um, so that's, that's meant, uh, you know when you have that urge to do something and you really want to do it, and, but then you have, if the, if the process is extended over a long period of time, perhaps the enthusiasm wanes or that whatever it was that you wanted to capture wasn't there. With the iPad I seem to be able to sustain that much better because because I can paint an image within a few hours or a couple of days as opposed to weeks. I don't have to, I don't I don't labor over it the same way that I used to with and that's me, you know, that's I like technology. I'm kind of I'm not um, put off by um, some of the aspects about it. And that's not perfect. You know, it's just like it's like you you know you try a new paint from Germany and you really like it and then you try something a little cheaper from somewhere else and you don't like it and it doesn't do the same things, well, technology is like that too. There are glitches. There are days when I turn on my iPad and they've updated my whole system, like they've updated the actual app. They don't tell you, oh, we're going to be updating your app and you have the option of keeping it the way you've learned it. It's just, it's there. It hasn't, it hasn't happened a lot, but it's happened a couple of times recently where I thought, Oh, I'm finally getting this. And then I opened up my iPad, turned it on, went to my app to start a new painting, and the whole look of it had been redesigned. And my palette was now...